Hello, and welcome to this What's New video for Compress 2014. Today, I'm going to discuss our new build and some of the new features that are available to you. The main features that I'm going to touch on today will be the 2013 ASME code rules, the forms update, the IBC 2012 building codes, as well as the new WRC 537. Let's get started. With the 2013 code rules, many of the changes were made in part UHX. I'm going to go over a couple of notable changes for you. The first is the updated materials database. Next is UHX 9, the tube sheet extension. For tube sheet configurations with extensions, the extension is now classified as flanged or unflanged. External pressure design. For all exchanger types, a new shell side and tube side external pressure input is now available for each design condition specified. So if we open up our heat exchanger wizard, so I'll right click on our heat exchanger, and we go to one of the design conditions pages, you'll now see an external design pressure input. So the next change is with the design and operating load cases. Part UHX now distinguishes the primary and secondary load cases as the design loading cases and the operating loading cases. Previously, there were seven load cases, of which one to three were primary and four to seven were secondary. There are now four design loading cases and four operating loading cases. Essentially, the loading cases are the same as the previous edition, with the exceptions that the operating pressure is permitted for the operating loading cases, and external pressure may now be considered simultaneously with the specified design condition. Okay, the next change has to do with the Appendix 26 bellows expansion joints. Bellows calculations have been updated to the Expansion Joint Manufacturers Association 9th edition, with the exception of the coefficients taking into account the initial rotation of the bellows. Additionally, Code Case 2587 has been incorporated. Just a quick note here, the Appendix 26 bellow expansion joints had a lot of changes. To see a full list of changes made and compress, you can simply go to the Help menu, and you can select View History. This will open up our history document, and you can click on the Heat Exchanger Change List, and you can go through all the new features that we've incorporated. Another place you can look for changes would be in the Summary of Changes section in your codebook. This can be found at the start of your 2013 codebook. Along with these changes is also a new U form for you to fill out. The 2013 edition introduced a U5 form, which is a manufacturer's data report supplementary sheet for shell and tube heat exchangers. So as always, we can go to our Forms menu, select ASME U forms, and you'll now see an ASME U5 form. So let's click on this and fill it out. So as always, when you select the form, Compress will open up an HTML version of this form and will populate this form for you, like so. So as you can see, I've filled out the basic information up here at the top. Again, this information we can fill out in a default setting. So you just simply come up to the form menu, select form settings, and you can fill out much of your information ahead of time and save it as a default so that all forms are populated with this information. and any of the technical information for the unit, we will fill out for you. So as you can see, Compress has actually gone ahead and filled out all this information for you. So all you would need to do is review it, add any additional remarks that you may have, and then click Finish right here at the bottom. And this will generate a PDF form of the U5 form for you. Okay, next on the list are the IBC building codes. You can now select the IBC 2012 code for the wind and seismic for your calculations. So what we'll do is we'll simply go up to our codes menu and we'll start with wind. And under the wind code, you'll see now the IBC 2012 is available. And we click OK. Now the IBC 2012 code will be considered on this heat exchanger. Likewise, we'll do the same for seismic. We'll simply go to the codes menu select seismic 
and we'll select our IBC 2012 code. The last item that I'd like to touch on is the WRC 537. The WRC 537 was written to update or replace the WRC 107. We can still use the WRC 107, but if you'd like to change between this and use the 537, what we'll do is we'll come up to our action menu, we'll select set mode options, and on the general 2 page, we'll come down to the bottom and under the local stress calculation method, we'll select WRC 537. Now you can also choose to click Save Defaults, so if you would like to have all new nozzles analyzed with the WRC 537, we can do that, or if you would just like this one particular file, we'll just click OK here. So now our nozzles are set up to use the WRC 537. So let's have a look at the dialog. So what I'll do is I'll take Nozzle N3 right here, and I'll right click on it and we'll open it up, and we'll go to the next screen. So what we'll do is we'll click on the WRC Local Stress button here. So this is the WRC 537 dialog. This is still the same dialog that we use for the 107 because the methods are identical. It was just a replacement. So if you're, if you're accustomed to using the 107 before, nothing has changed here. But I just wanted to go ahead and show you this. So I'll click OK here. And I'll click OK. Thank you for watching this quick video. If you have any questions or would like to see a demonstration, please email sales at codeword.com or call 941-927-2670.